Play on through to Drop Smith Radio, Arizona. Four! Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on NBC 1260. And 96.1 FM. Now, the talk continues on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. This is Healthy Eyes with Dr. C, live from the Best Buy studios at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. For many of us, our eyes are more than just a window to our world. They're part of how people perceive us, how we look, as well as how we see ourselves and others. There's so much more to healthy eyes than just their shape and color. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now. Now and find out how to keep your world in sharp focus for many years to come. Now, with healthy eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. Seven minutes after the hour at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, live from the Best Buy Studios, this is Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. 480-423-1260, the number to call to get in on the conversation. Dr. C is Dr. John Chrysagas and uh, Dr. Dr. Chrysagas, you are live from the Macular Degeneration Convention, is that right? Yeah, it's a symposium out in Glendale, so it's not really live from the Best Buy studios today. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, tell us what that is. What is a symposium? And uh, what, again, for folks who are just tuning into the show for the first time, is macular degeneration? Well, last week um, I had two other doctors on the show, Dr. Morgan and Dr. Tolentino, that both both spoke at this... uh, symposium today with me, and basically macular degeneration is when the macula, the center of the retina, begins to break down for various reasons, and it's called age-related macular degeneration because this typically doesn't happen until the fifth, sixth, seventh decade of life and tends to increase as we get older, and it is becoming um, an epidemic of proportion only because more of us are getting older, you know, the baby boomers are getting older, and it's going to start affecting a lot more people. So this symposium is put on by the Macular Degeneration Association. And uh, we had about 130 people in attendance here today. Uh, most of them either have macular degeneration and wanted to learn more about it, they have a relative with macular degeneration and wanted to learn more about it, or they know someone or heard something about it and came out just to uh, hear some, uh, some of the um, doctors at the forefront talk about it. Dr. Tolentino has done a lot of research on macular degeneration. And having him out from Florida was great. And if we have a chance, depending on how the question and answer session goes, which is going on next door, uh, if we can get him in here um, uh, before the show's on, we can have Dr. Tol- Tolentino on again. Oh, that'll be fantastic. He was on last week, and he was fantastic. I mean, oh, he's, he's a fireball. But I got another fireball here for you, too. Oh, ah, okay. I do. Uh, with me right now is Donna Ozier. She's the executive director of the Macular Regeneration Association. Uh, she was the person responsible for putting this on. She was kind enough to uh, want to do a meeting here in Phoenix, and she's been a, a great... I can't call her a hostess because she's not from here, but it was her meeting, so she's done a, a great job. Donna, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, what can you tell us, what is the Macular Degeneration Association? Okay, the Macular Degeneration Association is an association designed to put on educational programs to bring awareness about macular degeneration to the public. Do you feel there is a a lack of knowledge about this? Unfortunately, yes, there is. And there's also a stigma around macular degeneration. When patients are told they have macular degeneration, they feel they're going blind, and that is not the case anymore. Fourteen years ago, it was, but at this point, it is not. We have a lot of new treatments that the doctors are able to do, and this way, if our, our, what we're trying to do is bring the awareness, and let the patients know that they're in charge of their own health. They're the ones that need to make sure that they go for the eye exams every year. An eye exam is exceptionally important because that's what's going to pick this up the fastest. Also, there's a little amplified grid test that you can do by covering one eye and then the other eye. This affects women, but it also affects men. And it's very, very important to catch it as quickly and as early as possible because that's the best time that we can turn around, the doctors can turn around and make sure it doesn't get to the point where it can cause blindness. Yeah, and that's one of the things that has come up a lot in in these talks today, that the 
the treatments have increased uh, or improved and increased. But the, the key to this whole thing is early diagnosis. And the faster we can catch it, and we talked about this last week with Dr. Tolentino and Dr. Morgan, too, that the faster we can catch this, the faster we can get um, the patients to a doctor that can do something about it, whether it's the injection. Because you remember last week, uh, Mark, with Dr. Tolentino talking about the injection. Oh, yeah. Right from him. <laughs> I dreamt about off, it. You went off on that one. <laughs> that, that I had some very strange that. dreams following yeah. that. But it's, you know, it's, it's the, the more we can educate people, uh, the, the better it's going to be because right now, you know, in my lecture, I was talking about how people always ask me when I'm looking at their pupils before I even look at the back of their eyes, well, do you see any cataracts? Do you see do I have a good glaucoma? They know about that stuff, but they don't necessarily know about macular degeneration. And that's something that is increasing in the population as, as we speak, as time goes on. So, uh, uh, Dr. But, C, t- tell us, uh, what Donna had talked about this test where uh, you cover one eye, then you cover right. the other eye. Uh, well, what's that about and, and what does that show? I. I'm going to address that in a second, only because Donna might have to run out of here. The meeting's ending, and she's got her uh, her things to do as far as uh, uh, making sure everyone gets where they need to go. Okay. So I wanted to ask her one more thing as far as if people want to know more or want to get more information from you, what are your? how can they contact you? We have a website, and it's, the website address is www.maculardegenerationassociation.com. Org. And I'm sorry, but it all has to be spelled out. Um, there's my information is uh, on their website. It has my phone number. By all means, they can call me. I'll be glad to uh, give them anything they want. We have newsletters that we publish quarterly. I'll be glad to send it to them. I'll be glad to help them. But I wanted to reiterate something. Your optometrists are your main doctors that you need to go see. They're the doctors on the forefront of catching macular degeneration. Your retina specialists are fantastic. They're the ones that are going to handle it and take care of it. But your your doctors are your optometrists. They will catch it. And they're who you need to see and make sure that you have a yearly exam. Or if you have macular degeneration in your family, then please, every six months, it's very, very important. And then they will also advise you on nutrition, uh, supplements, vitamin supplements. We have a wonderful supplement out there. As a matter of fact, I'm taking it. It's called Macula Health. I have been diagnosed with macular degeneration myself. I have the dry form in my left eye, and I am only 53 years of age. And usually women don't like to tell their age, but I feel that this is very important because this uh, thing around macular degeneration, they always say it's for 60 and above, but that's not the case any longer. We have some patients that ask for information and they're in their 40s. So it is very, very important, again, that you please have your eyes examined. See, Mark, Donna's taking one for the team there. She's telling yeah, the whole team about the area wow. her age. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. See how dedicated she is. Now, Donna's probably going to kill me when I say something like this because this never came up in our conversations. But, Donna, if they go to the website, is there, um, there is information there that if someone wanted to make a donation to the Nitrogen Generation Association to help increase awareness of this disease, are there ways to do that? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, at any time, anything we can do to increase awareness and increase patient education about things like this, it's only going to help. And it doesn't matter, you know, again, uh, three of the four speakers today are optometrists. We don't even treat the disease itself. The retinal specialists do that. But as we talked about last week, there aren't enough retinal specialists to handle all the diagnosis and all the treatment. So we need to make sure that optometrists are up to speed as far as what we're supposed to do to detect and monitor before it's time to go see the retinal specialist. And once again, uh, www.maculardegenerationassociation.org is the website to visit to get more information about the organization. It's 15 minutes after the hour. You're listening to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. We are live from the Best Buy studios at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. 480-423-1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. We will be back with more of Healthy Eyes right after this. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. 
By adapting to changing life conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Come on, Lisa. Let's go before it gets dark. Well, we haven't talked to everybody yet. Why do we want to go so soon? You know I don't like driving at night. The lights on oncoming traffic and reflections are just off. I'll drive back tonight. I have my anti-reflective lenses with me. I don't have that problem. Works for me. Let's get some more food. Later that same evening. Okay, everybody. Smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflexive lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. The doctors and staff of Tempe Eye Care Associates at 7511 South McClintock Drive in Tempe are committed to providing you state-of-the-art eye care services and products in a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Remember the bionic man? We're not quite there yet, but we're not as far away as you might think. Through annual comprehensive eye examinations, the goal at Tempe Eye Care Associates is to not only maximize your visual performance, but to ensure and maintain your healthy eyes. As part of your annual examination, your visual acuity will be measured and a test known as refraction is conducted to determine your eye's refractive power. Further tests are performed to determine your visual coordination, muscle control, and focusing abilities. Your examination will include a comprehensive evaluation of your eye health to detect diseases such as glaucoma, cataracts, and retina and optic nerve abnormalities. The ocular health evaluation includes neurological assessments, measurement of internal eye pressure, and a thorough examination of the internal and external structures of the eye. Tempe Eye Care Associates also offers the OptoMap Retinal Examination System. OptoMap allows many patients the option to forego dilating drops by providing an ultra-wide view of the retina. While it doesn't replace dilation in all patients, it's an option for many. After performing these tests, their doctors will discuss your results and, if needed, explain your prescription and give you a better understanding of your overall eye health. Traditional options such as glasses, contact lenses, and eye medications will be discussed, as well as any other options you may need to consider. Dr. C is available to assist you personally, so you know you're getting the best available eye care, even if you're not on the Valley's basketball, baseball, hockey, or football teams. You'll see better after you see Dr. C. To make an appointment to visit Dr. C, call his office right now at 480-967-4910. That's 480-967-4910. Help keep your eyes healthy, regardless of where you live in the valley, by starting with a call to the office of Dr. C. 480-967-4910 today. 480 480- 9674910 or visit www.tempiicareassociates.com that's www.tempiicareassociates.com Hey Dan, how's it going? Great. Nice looking eyeglasses. Thanks. They look good and I can see clearer too. My doctor recommended these new digital lenses. He said that they're the latest in lens technology. It makes sense. Everything is going digital. Uh, there's my ride. See ya. Bye. Hey, what are those lenses called again? Kodak. Ask for Kodak lenses. Kodak, huh? That'll be easy to remember. It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Now, the 
talk continues and you're just a phone call away on entertaining talk radio nbc 1260 and 96.1 fm welcome back to healthy eyes with dr c every saturday from 2 to 3 p.m arizona time get in on the conversation call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air once again with healthy eyes here is your host dr c 21 minutes after the hour at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, Healthy Eyes, and uh, I was going to say live from the Best Buy Studios, but Dr. C... Well, you are. Yeah, yeah one of us. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yeah, why didn't ahead. we bring the webcam out here? We that would have been the right the thing webcam. to do, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you were at the Macular Degeneration Symposium, and you were just Giant. talking to, to Donna, who and, is... And Donna took off. Donna is the president of... Of the Macular Degeneration Association? She's the executive director. The executive director. Yeah. And I, I don't know how much of this you you know about, uh, specifically about the organization, but how does an organization like that uh, develop and then go to uh, something as, uh, the, I guess, to, to have the resources that they can put on a symposium the size of, of the the place you're speaking at? Well, it got it got started, I heard this morning. Um, hold, hold on one second. I have to introduce a guest. Sure. We're going to talk about his stuff in a second. But with me is Greg Nace. Greg Nace is on the board of uh, directors of iSolutions, a uh, corporation that helps with the prevention uh, of macular degeneration. Welcome, Greg. Thank you for having me. Now, do you know what, what is Larry's uh, role? What is his title? I can't remember. Sure. Uh, Larry is the chairman and founder of the Macular Degeneration Association. Because what he mentioned today was uh, to get back to your question about how did this get started. His mother was diagnosed with macular degeneration. Oh, wow. And when he retired, he was a, he's an attorney that lived in Washington. He retired to Florida and saw what she was going through with macular degeneration, decided that, to make that one of his the passions of his life. And so he started this association and raised funds basically to increase awareness of the disease and educate people about the disease. Wow. That's, and, uh, uh, that's incredible. Yeah, and so, you know, and one of the one of the hosts or one of the sponsors of this event is Greg's company, is uh, um, iSolutions. And iSolutions is is here. They're, they're specifically, they do a number of things with prevention because that's what their, their whole idea is. And they're the prime uh, source of some of the uh, supplements that we use, uh, specifically the Macu Health that we talked about last week with uh, Dr. Tolentino and Dr. Morgan. And uh, so, Greg, what can you tell us about Macu Health? Sure, sure. Thanks for having me. First of all, as far as Mackey Health goes, I, our real goal with the product is to try to catch patients early, either those that have early signs of macular degeneration or uh, an often neglected area, which is the siblings, you know, the children of those that have macular degeneration. And Mackey Health itself is uh, maybe an example is best. Let's just say there's 600 of these what they call carotenoids. Uh, in nature, and there's only three of them that actually get to the macula, which macular degeneration is the loss of central vision, you know, i.e. the macula. So with the idea of all three of these key carotenoids, they're lutein, zeaxanthin, and what uh, science is telling us the most critical of the three, which is mesozeaxanthin, this formula macula health is the only one that has all three of those carotenoids found in the macula uh, in the right formulation, which is key. The, and 10 to formulation. So, so essentially, we've put a, uh, a bottle of Macu Health together. It's a 90 count bottle or a three month supply. And the patient just takes one soft gel per day with meals. And the idea with these with supplementation, and just as an aside, the website for your viewers, um, there's a segment on there that was shot here in Phoenix, actually on ABC. And the website is nomoreamd.com. So if any of your viewers want to learn a little more information. But that being said, the goal of Macu Health, take the one soft gel a day, build up what's called macular pigment, kind of think of it as sunscreen for your eyes. Uh, the end result of that is slowing the progression of the disease, and in some cases, reversing. Did you take notes on that? Yeah, I actually okay. did. That is incredible. How do you spell how do you spell zeaxanthine then? I, I put V, but it's I put Z I O Z A N T H E N. Whatever. It's a it has all it has all three. It's a ten ten two formulation. One soft gel per day with meals. No more AMD dot coms. The website build up macula pigment. That's perfect. That exactly. You know the great thing about that is what we prefer to do in our office now is. Uh, have a patient take a multiple vitamin of their choice instead of taking something that has a lot of things they don't need, which has been the regimen 
up until now, I have patients take the multiple that they've been taking, that they're used to taking, that their their bodies can take physiologically, and it helps them and it works. And now you're just adding the carotenoids to it, and so you're not adding a bunch of stuff they don't need in addition to that, and it seems to uh, be doing a great job because, as a matter of fact, there there are studies out there that talk, that show that we can measure macular pigment. And another thing that Eye Solutions is doing, Eye Solutions is developing a densitometer. There's another word you can write down with some of the leading um, sources in the country. Uh, I know it's an, it's an Ivy League thing, so it's way past me. But uh, they're developing a, a, an MPOD, a macular pigment optical densitometer, that is going to be able to wow. measure the amount of pigment that you have in the macula. And the theory behind this is the more macular pigment you have, the more protection you're going to have. So if we can measure and find out your low supplement you, we can we can take a reading later to see if we're actually increasing those levels. And, and every day I see Greg, or every, not every day, but whenever I see Greg, I'm always asking, when's that densitometer coming out? And his standard answer is next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happens if you take a, 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 you know, the, this particular formulation and, can, and you don't have any issues? Can you just take it in a, present, a preventative sense, or would that make Great. sense too? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And the main point of that, I think, is you know, macular degeneration is a lifelong disease. So even though there's not visible signs of it, um, present, if you have a family history, you're essentially a 50% shot of getting it yourself. Wow, that's so very great, high odds. Yeah, so that's a fantastic point. And that being said, typically patients that are 21 and older that have a family history, it's a good idea from a preventative standpoint to take that one soft gel a day to build and keep that macular pigment at a very high level, you know, again, lowering that risk of progression. So that's a great point. And, you know, if you dollarize it, too, I hate to throw it out there, but dollars and cents are important. But you know, one of the key ingredients in there, zeaxanthin, comes from red peppers. If you just went to the market and gauge the cost of two red peppers, you know, it's going to essentially be $2 cost. And macular health is 83 cents a day. And you can, you can see that on no more AMD. So, so absolutely start. That's the whole idea of prevention is, you have a family history, catch the disease early, slow the progression, and to Dr. C's point, we will have soon an instrument <laughs> called the, called the uh, macular yeah. densitometer where, where you can go into offices like Dr. C's, get measured, get tested, and um, make a difference. Do you think that we'll see, Greg, do you think we'll see this type of a test in in schools where kids might be tested even though they might not necessarily normally be by by percentages be affected with it until they're older. Hey, 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 hey. We haven't even gotten to our offices yet. Don't even go down there. I've already gotten distributed to the school system. Big time. You'll bypass the office and we'll go straight to the, go straight to the school. <laughs> That's great. I'm just writing that Peter Churchins here. Hold on a second. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. No, you know, I don't see it going. I don't see it going that far. Who knows? You never know where American capitalism might take it, but... You know, as far as it is called age-related macular degeneration for a reason, and you know, it, the it does happen to. But it, again, it starts at a young age. It just happens that the macular pigment begins to, as Dr. Tolentino put it today, it retires. It, it, it doesn't go away. It just doesn't work as well as it once did, like some of us do as we get a little older. And so, the whole, the whole idea is not to necessarily start to supplement at age six. It's to, as we get older and as we start to deplete uh, the the macular pigment that we have, it may be a good idea to keep it up to keep it up there. So I don't think it would ever go into a pediatric type of, uh, unless research leads it there. At this point in time, I don't think anything in the research would say that kids need to have supplementation. Sure. Agreed. Okay, 30 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Dr. Chris Sagas, or Dr. C, is the host of the show. I'm executive producer Mark Shander. We'd like to hear questions from you at 480-423-1260. That's the number to call to get in on the conversation, 480-423-1260. We will be back with more of Healthy Eyes right after this. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. 
same evening. Okay, everybody, smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflexive lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Hi, I'm Mark Shander, executive producer of Healthy Eyes. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Your eyes are more than just your window to the world. They're how other people see you and sometimes see right through you. Find out how to protect your vision with the latest technology in eye care this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Great. Nice-looking eyeglasses. Thanks. They look good, and I can see clearer, too. My doctor recommended these new digital lenses. He said that they're the latest in lens technology. It makes sense. Everything is going digital. Uh, there's my ride. See ya. Bye. Hey, what are those lenses called again? Kodak. Ask for Kodak lenses. Kodak, huh? That'll be easy to remember. It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Now the talk continues, and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. 33 minutes after the hour at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, this is Healthy Eyes, live from the Best Buy studios at NBC 1260. 480-423-1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. And Dr. C is out at the Macular Degeneration Symposium uh, here in town. What city is that in, Dr. C? We're out in Glendale. We're at the uh, Renaissance Hotel right next to the uh, Cardinal Stadium, I guess the uh, University of Phoenix Stadium, and um, it's a very nice venue. Like I said, we had about 130 people here today, uh, most of which either have macular regeneration or have a family member uh, with it and wanted to learn more about it, and it was a symposium, as Donna mentioned, that uh, the association tries to put on at various venues around the country to increase the public's awareness about the uh, this disease. Two questions for you. Number one, uh, I wanted to find out some of uh, the content of your particular speech and what you spoke about. And then the other thing was Donna had mentioned this test where you cover one eye, cover the other eye, and go back and forth. I wanted to get to that and find out uh, what that was about and what it is that you're kind of looking for as you compare one eye sight, uh, the sight from one eye to the other. Okay, we can get to that. Um, but before I do that, uh, I brought, I've got my third guest here today. That's how we got into this last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, Dr. Gary Morgan's with me. Uh, Dr. Morgan practices in uh, Peoria. He was on with us last week with Dr. Tolentino. We're going to try and get Dr. Tolentino on because he is a, he is a rock star next door. I mean, we've got uh, people that are jamming him, and we don't know if he's going to get in here by 3 o'clock to talk to us. But uh, Dr. Morgan was, was nice enough to, uh, to pull away. And uh, Gary, how are you today? Doing great, John. Thanks for having me on. How do you think the symposium's going so far? He was the, he was the uh, uh, what was your title, the uh, chairman. chairman? Yeah, so uh, how do you think it's going? I think it's going fantastic. I mean, I, I'm really glad that the Macular Degeneration Association uh, decided to come out to Phoenix and, and give this program. Um, lots of engaged uh, patients here today. I think that uh, everybody learned quite a bit, uh, particularly in prevention methods. Um, you know, living here in Arizona, we have high levels of uh, UV exposure and, in particular, um, exposure to blue light, which is what can drive uh, macular degeneration, the oxidative changes in the eye that leads to the disease. So, 
we learned about um, protecting our eyes from blue light. The sky is blue. We're surrounded by it here. We need to have blue blocking um, lenses to protect our eyes, that external protection that we can do. Also, internal protections through the use of uh, nutrition supplements uh, was covered today. So, very good information for patients with the disease. Yeah, and they were, in, I mean, during breaks, they were coming up to uh, not only were Gary and I here, but there were uh, um, two other eye doctors on the panel, but there were six or seven eye doctors from around the valley, optometrists and some rental specialists that were here, and people were just flocking to us asking us questions about as it related to them. So they were, they're very engaged, but it, that's all it pretty much takes if you have the disease and or you see someone in your family going through the disease because if it's not caught in time, it can it can cause some problems as far as just your overall independence uh, between taking the driver's license away or possibly making it so you can't live alone because you can't see to do the things you need to do. So as awareness increases, people want to know, people want more information. Uh, absolutely, and, and that was one of the um, topics touched on today is that, you know, un unfortunately sometimes when, when we go for an eye exam because uh, the doctors may be um, extremely busy, uh, there's just not an opportunity for uh, the full education on, on, on the disease that the patient may have, especially something like macular degeneration. So an event like this really gives us an opportunity to um, uh, get a lot more uh, involved and, and personal with, with patients and, and really be able to uh, take the time to answer their questions, to explain their disease, and, and really show them what they need to do to, uh, to maintain their, their eyesight and uh, preventative measures they can take as well. Interesting. Yeah, so Mark, you know, what, cause what I can do is I can talk about the uh, test you keep uh, coming back to um, when Gary's done in, in the next segment. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. But, no but as far as the, uh, you know, the content of, of, of my speech, and I can talk about what everyone talked about, you know, Dr. Tolentino started talking about what is macular degeneration, and then Gary gave his, uh, Dr. Morgan gave his infamous speech on the oxidation, the oxidative process, and how it's almost like the, the macula is rusting. Um, and then Dr. Tolentino got back down and talked about genetic testing that we use for various aspects of uh, macular degeneration. Again, the genetic test is, uh, uh, as Dr. Borger likes to put, it's like a crystal ball that allows us to see what this pa if this patient is going to be at a Category 1 or a Category 5, 5 of which is worse than 1, and it's going to tell us how often we need to have that patient back for, for checks. It doesn't do anything. We don't treat it any differently. It's just how often are we going to have that person back to do the diagnostic testing we need to do. And then I, what my talk was, was what's the difference, why are early eye examinations important, and what's the difference in an eye exam if you have macular degeneration versus if you don't? Because a lot of them are very similar, but some things are, are, are different. Uh, and then we had a doctor talk about different magnification devices. If the macular degeneration has gotten to the point where we can't get you to see that well, and they've given you injections and you're not getting any better, well, now we have to deal with that. And there are specialists in the valley. Uh, typically optometrists that specialize in low, vi low vision rehabilitation that actually come up with devices to help you to read if that's what's most important to you, possibly even drive or see the TV, and they deal with magnification and different types of electronic devices to try and get you to, to see better. And then finally, there was a nutritionist that talked about nutritional aspects of macular regeneration, and then Dr. Tolentino finished up talking about what's coming down the pike because he's heavy into research in the retina. Um, as he told us last week, his father was a retinal specialist who was a professor at Harvard, so he's been doing this all his life with his dad. And he's talking about stem cell research. He's talking about different injections that are coming down the road. It's just an amazing time as far as all the research that's going into this. Well, let me ask a, a question of Dr. Morgan. Uh, you you ha uh, spoke to us and talked about uh, kind of the, uh, the equivalent of... Um, of rusting, of rusting of, of pigments. Um, and, and I guess with rust, some of the ways you could get rid of it is to kind of, you, you could use uh, like a, a Brillo pad kind of thing or use some uh, scouring pad and kind of get rid of it. Uh, how does scouring rust away or doing something like that differ from using a product that is uh, like Macu Health with the 10102 formulation and, and the so one soft gel per day and, and, and that sort of thing for treatment? Well, you know, it's it's really is um, involves protection of of the eye from from the rusting in the first place. Now, this is um, kind of difficult to, I guess, describe uh, on a radio show versus something that's visual. But I'll try to give you the visual. If um, if we think of the back of our of our eye like say a ping pong ball, and the inner part of the ping pong ball is the if like if we drilled a hole in one side and it goes in straight to the other side. 
um, the hole that we drilled, that would be our pupil where light enters, the damaging light that can cause the oxidative damage or the rusting, the blue light, and it makes its way to the other, the inner side of the ping pong ball on the other side. That's where our, our macula would be. Well, we have what's called macular pigment, which is kind of like internal rust proofing right on the surface of that uh, ping pong ball on the inside. So it's made up of carotenoids uh, the, that are found in macu health in the uh, proper 10 10 2 ratio that you mentioned. So we have that built into our eye naturally. However, some of us are born with less than others, especially if we have a light complexion. Also, as we get older, we tend to lose it. So if we use a supplement like MacuHealth that has three carotenoids that make up that internal rust proofing, and you know, they're kind of large names, they're mesozeaxanthin, zeaxanthin, and lutein, um, when we ingest that type of a supplement, it absorbs into our bloodstream and deposits into the eye to be protective for the inner layers of that retina be, uh, that, uh, where, where the damage can take place. So um, in addition to wearing a blue-blocking type of sun lens, for our external protection, we can use this macular health to build our macular pigment, our natural internal protection, to prevent that rusting from occurring. Interesting. That was fantastic. Like Thank is, you very, very much for that. You were asking about scrubbing off the, the rust mark. Yeah. Um, so, Gary, would you say that once we have that rust, we're not getting rid of it. We're just trying then to maintain so it doesn't get worse. The, in a sense, yes, um, that is correct. We're trying to maintain and not have it get worse, although it is interesting. There's been um, uh, many cases reported, and I have some in my own practice where I have photographs, where patients actually had uh, the rusting, which is called, it's called truzin. We see these little deposits in the back of the retina, and they were put on a carotenoid supplement like MacuHealth, and over a period of time, the truzin disappeared. So wow. in some cases, and we don't understand, and we don't know who this is going to happen for, um, and or why it happens at this point. But we have had patients who actually reduce or reverse the effects of dry macular degeneration with carotenoid supplementation. Wow. Um, you know, again, there's been uh, numerous cases, photographic evidence of that occurring. So um, we can't say that's going to happen for it. We we know that uh, carotenoid supplements are going to help everybody as far as trying to prevent further oxidation. That's the best internal protection we have. Um, but for some patients, we even see a reversal of some of their disease. Wow, that is really impressive. And if anybody wonders, uh, you know, and they, they hear you are what you eat, you truly are because if you take these particular supplements, it, it actually builds and, and goes right into your eye, if you will, and, uh, and, and becomes what it is that you ate. I mean, it, well, yeah. I don't even know, you know how else to describe it, but... And they talk about, you know, one of the cliches is that America, Americans have the um, most costly urine in the world because of all the supplements we take, and we do tend to lose a lot of the supplements we take uh, because they're not absorbed by the body, and then some of them we do take are absorbed by the body, and they shouldn't be. You know, vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble vitamins, and so you can take too many of those, which can be part of the problem, too, but typically... If you watch what you're eating and you take the supplements and do what you're supposed to do, again, obesity is a risk factor with not only macular degeneration, but heart disease and everything else. And so it, it all comes back to the same thing that we talk about, whether you're at your family physician or the optometrist now, it's like people are just going to get harped on, stop smoking, have a good diet, lose weight, it's going to help everything. Very interesting. Now we just see, you know, places popping up all over the place that'll pay you 10 cents to use the toilet instead of you paying them 10 cents, like collecting gold. Uh, yeah. 45 minutes after so, the hour, 15... Before we go, before we go, I just want Dr. Kazoo going to have to take off and go clean up uh, some stuff in here with people that are waiting for him. But Gary, if people have any questions or want to contact you, how can they do that? Um, my office is uh, iTech Eye Associates, uh, located at 91st Avenue in Union Hills. Uh, the phone number is 623-933-6586, or our website is iTechEyes.com. E-Y-E-I-T-E-C-H-I-E-S.com, is that right? Correct, E-Y-E-T-E-C-H-I-E-S, E-Y-E-S. And you are specifically, um, you, you specialize in macular degeneration, and what else? Um, well, my, uh, I, I treat all types of uh, medical eye disease, but uh, because of my location near Sun City, I do see quite a preponderance of patients with uh, age-related macular degeneration as well as glaucoma or diabetes different conditions so we, we see everybody from uh, from infants to the elderly would you recommend someone see an optometrist first and be referred to you or should someone who has never seen an optometrist but maybe elderly see you first 
Uh, no, I mean, you know, we, we're, I'm a primary care eye, eye, eye doctor, so, okay. um, you know, we're, we're really your first, uh, we, we can be your first entree into uh, the medical eye care system. Okay, great. 14 minutes. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Really appreciate, especially the description of what's going on with, uh, with AMD. Because for some folks, that's the that is the most specific and uh, the most detailed description uh, of what's happening that they've ever heard, and we really appreciate that. Sure, my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Doctor Morgan. It is fourteen minutes till the top of the hour. You're listening to Healthy Eyes. We are live from the Best Buy Studios and on location in Glendale at the Macular Degeneration Symposium. Four eight zero four two three twelve sixty is the number to call if you'd like to get in on the conversation and ask some questions. You have always wondered if you think you might be at risk for AMD. If you're a little older and you've never been to an optometrist before, never seen a, a, an eye care professional. Get the advice. Ask the questions now. 480-423-1260. We will be back with more of Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM right after this. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Well, we haven't talked to everybody yet. Why do we want to go so soon? You know I don't like driving at night. The lights on oncoming traffic and reflections are just awful. Later that same evening. Okay, everybody, smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflexive lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Great. Nice-looking eyeglasses. Thanks. They look good, and I can see clearer, too. My doctor recommended these new digital lenses. He said that they're the latest in lens technology. It makes sense. Everything is going digital. Uh, there's my ride. See ya. Bye. Hey, what are those lenses called again? Kodak. Ask for Kodak lenses. Kodak, huh? That'll be easy to remember. It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or Transitions.com. Now the talk continues, and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. 11 minutes till the top of the hour. You're listening to NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. This is Healthy Eyes with Dr. C, Dr. John Chrysagis, and Dr. Chrysagis is live at the Macular Degeneration Symposium. And do you have another guest for us, uh, Dr. Hey, C? It's you and me now, big guy. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> the question I would like to know <laughs> is back from the beginning of the show. I know. You want to go back to what, uh, what Donna mentioned earlier about the... the um, um, Ansler grid test. Now, an Ansler grid is something that I and most every other eye doctor will give you if we think you have some type of macular degeneration or some type of a retinal problem, uh, most specifically involving the macula. Uh, and those of you that have one are going to know what I'm talking about. But it's a grid that you can put on the inside of your um, um, on, on your refrigerator door. You can put it on the inside of your uh, uh, makeup mirror or your you know uh, why am I not thinking of the <laughs> which you open up where all your medication is. But uh, um, you can, well, what you do is you set this up and you look at it, 
and it's a grid of, of lines that are spaced evenly, vertically and horizontally. And what you do is you cover one eye and you look at the center of that grid and you've got to make sure you fixate on the center of the grid and you make sure all four corners of the grid are there, you make sure all the lines are there and you make sure all the lines are straight. And then you go to the other eye and you do the same thing where you're, 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 you're just checking to make sure that everything with that grid is the way it's supposed to be. Now, the key to the Ansler grid is people doing it correctly. And I think a lot of times when doctors give it to you or they have a staff give it to you, they explain it real fast and you look at home and you say, how was I supposed to do this? You know, and if people put it up and look at it and they're using both eyes, it's not going to do anything. If they don't know what they're really looking at, it's not going to really do anything. And if they don't do it, obviously, it's not going to do anything. But what an Ansler grid can do is actually give you a, an indication that something's going on with the macula. Meaning, if all of a sudden you're starting to see a blurred area in that grid, maybe if it happened one day, I wouldn't tell you to run out and do anything about it, but if all of a sudden it gets consistent, where you're getting a blurred area in a specific spot of that grid every day, there's something going on there, and it's time to go in and see your eye doctor to find out if you've got some degeneration going on. So an Ansler grid is a screening device. It's a rather crude screening device, and the reason I say that is because it can be good if it's used correctly, but if it's not, it gives you a false sense of security. And so it has to be explained correctly, but it's a good thing to use. I'd rather use an Ansler grid than nothing, but there are other tests that are even more sensitive than the Ansler grid because the part of the problem is that if we just let you look off in the distance and we wait for you to say, when you notice blurred vision, come in and see us, again, it, it's gone too far. We'd rather catch it when it first starts to switch from dry to wet or when it's going from nothing to dry. And so, you know, the... the the Amsler grid is going to be something that is going to show up a little bit later than we'd like, but I'd rather have you see it on an Amsler grid than wait to come in for your annual exam, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, being able to see some early indicator yeah. or have some idea. Anything you can do to increase, because all we've talked about today, or all I've tried to stress is early detection. And so the treatment, that's, that's to the retinal specialist. We're going to get you out of our offices anyway. The whole idea is to get people in to make sure they're seen so that the earlier we can catch things, the faster they can be fixed. And the Ambler Grid is just another tool we have, another subjective tool that you have to look at. And if you see a change, then you call your eye doctor and see what's going on. Now, on the other hand, as part of my talk today, I talked about there's also something you can do online. It's called myvisiontest.com. And what they do is they have an Ansler grid on a computer. And they oh, wow. have certain, okay. certain other little tests that you can do that are part of a, <clears throat> quote, unquote, a PHP, which is a different machine. I talked, I talked about all the diagnostic instruments we use today, and one of them is a PHP, which a preferential hyperacuity meter, if you wanted to want to know. But um, the, what that will do, that's what is the, the, the device that's more sensitive than a an Ansler grid could be, where it tells us the first when something is going to go from a dry to wet, an intermediate AMD to a wet macular degeneration. And so there are just certain instruments that will help us see when we're going to, make, when we're going to get that change because that's the ultimate. When we, the first time we can see when it's starting to go wet, if you can go in and get that injection, you're going to have a lot better results than if we wait until you're 2040, 2050 or worse and get the injection. This is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, both uh, um, the a, a couple of people here at the station all went to uh, myvisiontest.com at the same time, including myself. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm on the iPad, and uh, it says, "Welcome to the mobile version of myvisiontest.com. Our vision tests are not available on this site. Please Great. visit myvisiontest.com from your PC to test your vision." <laughs> so I think they were. I think because it detected that I was on a, a mobile device, right. that it thought I was on a small mobile device, and the yeah. screen size was going to be pretty small, and it wouldn't be able to to kind of give yeah. a, a reasonable size. But the it's iPad, probably being, some, it's probably got some graphics in there that it doesn't think is going to be able to handle it with a, uh, you know, with a. With a yeah, they device. won't be large enough for you to really have a reasonable test. Yeah. But the uh, those that are on PCs, you know, they'll see on there. They'll see an answer grid, uh, which is basically like I say, it's just a grid with a little dot in the center for fixation. And then you've also got um, uh, the you know the other tests in there that have different grading scales, different things in there that um, uh, uh, will help people. Anything we can do to get them to notice a change, that's that's the key. Now, is this all AMD related? Because every single, uh, at least on the mobile site, every single uh, bit of information on there and test and everything else relates to AMD. Yeah, it's all, almost specifically due. To, I mean, for that because that's what. I mean, that's the, I don't know if it's the big thing right now, because if you have glaucoma, you don't really care about AMD. But macular degeneration is something that 
as the population ages, it's going to become, you know, where people are going to get in epidemic proportion, proportions only because more of us are living longer, and there's going to be more of us. You know, as the baby boomers get closer to 65, which they're there, it's going to create a population that, that you know, especially because we spend a lot of time outside, a lot of exposure to UV, um, we have to try and catch this stuff early on, and we've never had anything we could do about it. But now the retinal specialists have the different injections that they can use. Uh, stuff's coming down the pike, like Dr. Tolentino are referring to. They're doing all kinds of research to try and improve those things. But yeah, you know, people just have to be aware of it, especially as we get older. It's called age-related for a reason. Interesting. Well, we just have a few minutes left in the show. Uh, how would people get a hold of you, Dr. C, and uh, how would they get more information on AMD? Well, AMD, they can, uh, they can call Donna, or they can, can go on Donna's website with the AMD Association, but to contact us, and we have information on AMD also, and anything else we do at the office, but our phone number is 480-967-4910, we're in, we're in Tempe. Uh, the website is www.tempeeyecareassociates.com, that's one word, but as I told people, I also uh, got the www.drsee.com, which is a lot easier to type. And that will go into the Tempe Eye Care Associates website also. And uh, how, I guess, uh, how would somebody know without actually going to an eye care professional that they might have AMD? Are there any kind of visual kind of uh, suggestions? Not like flashers or anything like no, that? No, not flashers. But vision, yeah, vision, yes, meaning the whole problem with macular degeneration is you're losing your central vision. So if something's starting to go blurry, you know, you go in and have an eye exam, but Hopefully, 90% of the time when someone comes into our office because their vision is blurry, we can change their glasses or contacts and they'll see better. So just because your vision is blurry doesn't mean you have macular degeneration. It's when you come in for a regular routine eye examination and all of a sudden we see something on the back of the eye that indicates you might be getting something. You may have formed a few drusen, which I don't want to go into that, but drusen are basically, you could consider a precursor to macular degeneration, but there are a lot of people that have drusen that don't ever get macular degeneration, but it's something that a lot of them do. But if it's during a routine examination, we find some bruising, you happen to be 65 years of age, you've got a positive family history, you're female, you're light-complected, you smoke, yeah, I'm going to have you back a little bit more often, or I'm going to stress to you to come back more often, because we don't want to wait till, you're, till you can't see to do anything about it. But just because you've got those signs doesn't mean you have it yet. It just means, again, you're a, you're a candidate to, to, for it to get worse. And so we just want to watch it, and if it does, be there with some treatment if it's Available. And when is the best time to, to see an uh, eye care professional in, in terms of your life uh, if your parents didn't start you early? You know, oh, it, shoot. You know, like, like right now, if, if you say, when, when should someone be seen? Yeah, I yeah. always say about school age. But, you know, if you're in your 20s and you've never had an eye exam, is it always a good idea to just have an eye exam and then possibly go back five years after that? Yeah. It's always a good idea to get everything looked at to make sure you're okay, but I wouldn't be saying that for macular degeneration, meaning I don't expect to see much of anything in a 25-year-old coming in for an exam because they listen to this radio show. Um, they might want to come in just to make sure everything's all, everything else is okay, but as far as screening for macular degeneration, I would, I would not say that that's something they need to do. Okay. But as, as you're getting into the fifth and sixth decades of life and you're noticing some things, yeah, it's time to get your eyes examined to make sure everything's okay back then. And we will see you next week on Healthy Eyes. You've been listening to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 at 96.1 FM. The opinions expressed on this show are those of the host and are not meant to diagnose or treat any particular medical issue. Always check with your doctor or eye care professional before making any changes to your vision care. For more information about Healthy Eyes or to learn how you could be a guest on the show or a sponsor of the program, visit Dr. C at www.drsee.com. NBC 1260 is KBSZ, Apache Junction. Also operates on translator K241BQ at 96.1 FM.